And now, the Mole Mystery Theater, presented by M O L L E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Good evening. This is Jeffrey Barnes welcoming you to the Mole Mystery Theater, the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Henry Morgan, who was to have been with us tonight, will appear instead next week. Tonight, our story by Robert Mitchell and Gene Levitt is entitled Make No Mistake and stars Alan Baxter, well-known young actor of stage, screen, and radio, currently appearing in the hit motion picture, Close Up, who will play the leading role of Dave. Dave is one of two people, neither very good nor very bad, who find that one mistake can put into motion a series of events that leads inevitably to disaster. Well, yes, Mr. Barnes, but mistakes can be avoided. So let's make no mistake about this. Even a man with tough whiskers or a tender skin can enjoy a clean, comfortable shave. How? Just use Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Because it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Enjoy a Mole shave tomorrow. This is Jeffrey Barnes again, and act one of tonight's Mole Mystery, Make No Mistake, starring Alan Baxter. I had to hang on to myself a little longer because I had one more thing to do. I had to see her. Had to get to Jeannie and tell her it was all a mistake. A hideous mistake. And I had to hurry because I knew the police were going to get me any minute now. Watch it, you jerk. Uh, you crossed against the light, Mac. What's the matter? Tired of living? Tired of living? No. When you're 28 and in love, you're not tired of living. If you're going to die, it's for another reason, believe me. That's why I had to see Jeannie. Somehow I had to explain about the mistake. And that's what was driving me out of my mind. Even now, I couldn't look back and say just exactly where the mistake had been made. I couldn't tell. Even now, with death on my hands. Maybe this was a mistake, too. This coming to see Jeannie. But I had to. I had to tell her. After that, whatever happened didn't matter. I went up the steps and opened the door rang an automatic chime someplace inside, so I closed the door and waited. The room was elegant and very quiet. In my mind, I'd always imagined Jeannie surrounded by beautiful stuff like this. I wanted to clear my throat, but in this place, it didn't seem quite right. Then Mr. Mundy came out. May I help you, sir? Uh... I'd like to see Jeannie, Mrs. Jean Kimball. Oh, yes. And your name, sir? I'm her husband, Dave Kimball. Your... Oh. Oh, I see. Step this way. As I followed Mr. Mundy down the soundless corridor, I tried hard to think, to frame the words, because this is the last time I would ever see Jeannie. It was my last chance to explain, and it had to make sense. Maybe it happened that night a month ago. Maybe that's when the mistake was made. It was raining then, too, and business in the lunchroom was slow. I was cleaning up the counter when I looked back toward the kitchen and saw Jeannie standing in the doorway. Dave, I guess this is it. Hey, we can't close up yet. What's with a hat and coat? Quitting a little early, aren't you? Judging by most marriages, I guess I am. What was that? I didn't get that. I'm leaving you, Dave. I'm going right now. 
I got a ticket to San Francisco, and my train leaves in 40 minutes. It, it's got to be this way, Dave. Sharp and clean. Believe me, it's best. So it's... Bye-bye, Dave. No. No, Jeannie. Wait a minute. You can't. Please, you can't Dave. go. Don't try to hold me. But, Jeannie, why? You... You gotta tell me why. You can't just leave like this all of a sudden for no reason. Give me a chance, Jeannie. I have, Dave. I've given you a whole year of chances. You said if we got married, I'd learn to love you. You insisted on it. It was all your idea, not mine, and... Well, it, it just hasn't worked out, that's all. But it will, Jeannie. I know it will. Oh, baby, don't leave. Please, I love you, Jeannie. I'll do anything you say, Jeannie. Oh, stop I... it, stop it. Don't crawl, Dave. Good grief, it isn't the end of the world. It happens every day. We tried it and it didn't work, so I'm getting out. No hard feelings, Dave, and no regrets, huh? Just goodbye and good luck, okay? Will you write to me? I don't think so. But how are you going to live? What about money? I'll get by. Make no mistake about that, Dave. Besides, it's not your worry anymore. It'll always be my worry, Jean, always. Don't ever forget that. If you're ever in trouble... If you ever need me, just remember. Jean. Jeannie! She was gone, just like that. She walked out into the dark rain and was gone. I didn't think I could live without Jeannie. I loved her so much, but I lived. The days went by and the nights. Business picked up in the lunchroom and I hired a fellow to help out and things went along. They went along for almost a month and then maybe that's when it happened, the mistake, because then she came back. I just happened to glance up one night and there she was, sitting there watching me. Hello, Dave. Jeannie. Jeannie. Gee, what a surprise. Why, I never expected... Oh, Jeannie. Hey, look, let's get out of here. Go someplace where we can talk. All right, Dave. Hey, Tommy, take over for me, will you? Okay, Dave. Come on, Jean. Well, you... You look just the same, Jean. You haven't changed. Haven't I, Dave? No, you look wonderful. I, I guess San Francisco agrees with you. How is it, Jean? Are you happy? Oh, you know how San Francisco is... Hills and water and big bridges. But how have you been, Dave? And how's business? Okay. I got a new helper, I suppose you noticed. And business has been a little better. Oh, that's fine. I'm glad. Jeannie, I've missed you. Missed you terribly. Every minute of every day, I... Uh, sorry, I, f I forgot you have an aversion to crawling things. Oh, Dave, don't. That hurts. You see, I've come back. Jean. To stay if you want me. If I wanted her, there was nothing in the world I wanted more. We picked up life where we dropped it a month ago, and at first it seemed as though she'd never been away. But then I began to detect it, the change. Jeannie was afraid. She was on guard, waiting for something to happen. Two nights later, just before closing time, it did. It happened. I was in the kitchen when the guy came in. Sorry, mister, we're just closing. Go ahead and close. What do you want? Cup of coffee? Well, all right, as long as that's all you want. Just coffee, that's all. For now, baby. Thanks. By the way, baby, where are you from? What? Here. I'm right here. Why? Oh, nothing. For a minute, she looked like somebody I knew once in San Francisco. You ever been in San Francisco, baby? Say, uh, up around Fillmore Street? Dave. Dave, that man out there. What about him? Jeannie, what's the matter? You're white as a sheet. I, I'm not feeling so good, Dave. Will you wait on that guy for me? Well, sure, but... Hey, look... You sit down and take it easy. Hi, mister. You about finished with your coffee? Where's the girl? She's through for the night. We're closing up. 
How about a refill on the coffee? Look, mister, I said we're closing. We want to go get out of here and go home. I bet you do. Where does the girl live? She's a married woman. No, I'm sorry, but you'll have to leave. You mean you won't give me any more coffee? Is that what you mean? That's right. <laughs> okay, chum. Okay. Well, Jeannie, he's gone. Who was he? Did you... Jeannie? Jeannie, where are you? I don't even remember if I turned out the lights. I just locked the door and went home as fast as I could, and Jeannie was there in the apartment throwing things into a suitcase. She stopped when I walked in and just stood there staring at me with a look in her eyes I'd never seen before, as though she expected me to step up and hit her right in the face. Dave? What are you doing, Jean? Why are you packing? Why did you run out tonight? Dave, I, I've got to get out of here. I've got to leave town. Now, wait a minute. This is getting to be a habit with you. Oh, no, no, you don't understand. Yeah. Who was that big guy who came in? Did you know him? No, no, I never saw him before in my life. Don't lie, Jeannie. I swear it, I swear I don't know who he is. And why did you run from him? What happened in San Francisco, Jean? Nothing. Why is Fillmore Street so important to you? It isn't. Why are you afraid? I'm not, I'm not afraid. And nothing happened in San Francisco. Nothing, do you hear? <laughs> guy who came in tonight was only another dirty masher, and I felt so rotten I just couldn't take it anymore. Now leave me alone, will you? Oh, Dave, I, I'm sorry. Okay, Janie, okay. I guess we're both on edge, that's all. You, you're not going anywhere tonight. I'll put this stuff back in the closet where it belongs, and then you're going to bed and get a good night's rest. And maybe you'll feel better in the morning. Maybe everything will look different when the sun comes up. But I knew it wouldn't. I knew nothing would be different. Because when I went over to the window to pull down the blind, I saw the same big guy standing under a lamppost across the street, watching our apartment. <laughs> big stranger is certainly interested in Jeannie's affairs. But why? That's the question that's worrying Dave. We'll continue with Act Two of tonight's Mole Mystery in just a moment. Meanwhile, here's Dan Seymour with a question that worries a lot of men. Let me ask you this, men. When you run your razor over your face, does it pull? Does it snag? Does it scrape? Does it tear? Well, mister, chances are you have tough whiskers or a tender skin. So shave with Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Then you'll say it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole. That's right. Rich, creamy Mole is made to order for men who have tough whiskers or a tender skin. Because it is heavier, Mole not only softens your whiskers, it sets them up right ready for your razor to take them off easily and painlessly. So enjoy a mole shave tomorrow. And now this is Jeffrey Barnes again, returning you to the Mystery Theater and Act Two of Make No Mistake, starring Alan Baxter. Next morning, I made Jeannie promise to stay inside and keep the door locked. It was Tuesday and the lunchroom was closed, but I had to go down and work on the books, so I left. I'd gone about three blocks when I first noticed him, that same big guy. I don't know where he picked me up, but he was there following me. I decided to play a hunch when I saw the police station. I thought I could bluff him. He was only a few steps behind me as I crossed the street... I ran up the station steps and in the door, but he wasn't bluffed one inch, and we walked side by side right up to the sergeant's desk. Morning, gentlemen. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I... Uh, I was... Well, what is it? What's on your mind? Uh, look, can you tell me where I go to get a, a building permit? Sure, City Hall at 4th and Main. 
know where that is? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. You, sir? Nothing, Sergeant. I'm just here with my friend, Dave. So, you're going to do a little building, are you, Dave? What do you want? I just want to be sure I got the right party. What do you want? Was Gene up in San Francisco last week? Hey, who are you? What are you after? My name's Ragnar, Dave. Bert Ragnar. I was in San Francisco last week, and I found this. What? Why, that's... Yeah, a little anklet. Slave bracelet, they call it, don't they? I found it in a hotel on Fillmore Street. And I just wanted to see it return to its proper owner. It's inscribed. It says, to Jeannie with all my love, Dave. Give me that. Wait just a minute. Can you positively identify it? Well, the clasp was broken once. It's been soldered. <laughs> Here you are, Dave. You'll see the Jeannie gets it, won't you? <laughs> I'll be seeing you, Dave. <laughs> I got a terrible sinking feeling inside then, as if it were already too late, as if I knew already how it would end. I started to run after Ragnar to beat some answers out of him, but he was gone. I turned around and went back to the apartment instead. Dave? You're back so soon. Is everything all right? I've got something of ours, Jean. What? This. It's that little anklet you used to wear. Here. Where did you get this? That guy gave it to me, the big guy. The one who came in last night? That's right. His name is Ragnar. He says he found it last week in San Francisco. What did you tell him? What did you say to him, Dave? I identified it, and he returned it to me. You identified it for him? Oh, you... Fool, you blind, stupid fool, Dave. Why did you claim it? Because it's the one I gave you. Why shouldn't I identify oh, you it? you idiot. Tell me what you've done that makes me such a fool for claiming my own property. No. Now tell me what happened in San Francisco. No, Jean, tell me. I killed a man. Oh, Jeannie. Last week in a hotel on Fillmore Street. He was rotten. He deserved it. He was mean and vicious and he wouldn't leave me alone. And he was crazy jealous. Jealous? I tried to get away from him, but he followed me. And then there was a fight, and somehow I got his gun, and I, I shot him with it. Then I ran, and I got away. I didn't think anybody saw me. I didn't even miss the slave bracelet until the next day. And, oh, Dave. Dave, what are we going to do? Do? I don't know. Dave... Do you think Ragnar saw what I did? Do you think... He Ma knows all about it, believe me. You can count on that. But who is he? What does he want? Are you lying again, Jeannie? Don't you know? I swear, I swear I never saw him before in my life. What if he's a cop? Dave, what do we do if he's a cop? Now listen, Jeannie, there's Dave, no... Dave, let's, let's get out of here. Let's leave now, right away. While we still got a chance, we... Dave. Dave, don't answer it. Dave, please. We have to, Jeannie. Well? Why, Mr. Kimball, is uh, something wrong? Oh, it's you, Mr. Mead. <laughs> you opened that door like you expected the devil himself to be standing here. <laughs> and, you know, usually it, it's the tenants that don't pay their rent that look at me like that. <laughs> oh, how do you do, Mrs. Kimball? Sure is nice to have you back. Did you enjoy your trip? Um, excuse me, folks. It's uh, about the garbage chute. The man's complaining the tin cans are getting at the garbage again. Yeah, we'll watch it, Mr. Mead. We'll, we'll be careful. Uh, thank you, I... Well, uh, well, I'm sure it's not you anyway, but... Uh, well, well, goodbye, Mr. King. I thought it was him. I thought it was Ragnar. Oh, Dave. Dave, what if he's with the police? Stop crying, Jean. That won't help. Do you think he is, Dave? Do you think he's a cop? I don't know. He doesn't act like one exactly, but he's sure not afraid of him. Well, listen, Jeannie, if it was self-defense, maybe we ought to... Hello? This is Bert Ragnar, Dave. I suppose you've been talking things over with Jean. 
Well, now I guess it's about time for us all to get together and decide what's to be done. Listen, Ragnar. Now, you listen, Dave. You listen. I got a room at the Claremont Arms Hotel. You know where that is? It's a walk-up about five blocks from your place. I know where it is. All right. You and Jeannie be over there at 8 o'clock. Room 212. I'll be expecting you, Dave. So don't try to leave town or anything stupid like that. Don't disappoint me, Dave. We'll be there, Ragnar. Both of us. At 8. <laughs> on time. Come in. You want to sit down? No, thanks. We're all right. Okay, I'll be brief. I'm a private detective and not a very prosperous one, but I got a break last week. I was in the next room in that hotel on Fillmore and I heard the whole business through my open window. Are you going to go to the police? That depends entirely on you. You see, I make my living on other people's trouble. And baby, you're in trouble. If the San Francisco cops ever get a line on you, you haven't got a chance. What do you want us to do? Get to the point, Ragnar. You keep your shirt on. I'll get there. Right now, the police are stuck. They don't even have a lead. If I should come in with the killer, it'd put me right up there in the big time. So if I don't turn you in, it's got to be made worth my while. Why, you dirty rat. Hey. Don't crowd me, fella. I warn you. My price is $10,000. 10000 That's it. So think it over. Only don't think too long, because you've only got until midnight. Now get out. This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of Make No Mistake. Now, a word from George Putnam. One thing to remember about the most common type of dandruff is that many outstanding authorities say it is not a natural condition, but actually is caused by a germ called Pityrosporum ovale. Now, the only way you can get real relief is to destroy this germ. And simply washing or brushing away loose dandruff won't do it. But double dandrine will. Yes, double dandrine really works because it gets at the cause of this dandruff and kills it, actually kills the germ on contact. Results with double dandrine have been remarkable even in many stubborn cases. And the thing that makes double dandrine so amazingly effective is a special ingredient, an active antiseptic that's so wonderfully efficient, many hospitals use it. In double dandrine, we call it Alzan. So stop trying to combat this dandruff with ineffective methods that actually are no better than plain water. Use double dandrine and destroy the cause. Get double dandarine tomorrow. Your money back if not satisfied. Jeannie and I walked out of Ragnar's room and all the five blocks back to our apartment without speaking a word to each other. I glanced at her face once as we passed a streetlight. She looked sick. The fear in her eyes was ugly. That must have shocked me hard because I began really to think then, clearly, for the first time since Jeannie'd come back. And when we got home and the door was closed, I knew what I was going to do. We can raise the money, can't we, Dave? Ten thousand dollars isn't so much, is it? We can get it someplace, can't we, Dave? No, Jeannie, there's no way on earth for me to get that much money. But we've got to... We can't. If I went into hock for everything I have, I couldn't touch ten thousand dollars... And even if I could, do you think that'd be the end of it? Why, he'd never quit. But he's going to turn me into the police if we don't pay him the money. You aren't going to let him turn me into the police, are you, Dave? Oh, you can't. I love you, and, and they'll take me away from you. Do you really love me, Jeannie? Oh, yes, yes. I've always loved you, Dave. I was wrong before, honest. I... Oh, Dave, don't let him turn me in. I won't, Jeannie. Don't worry anymore. Ragnar won't turn you in. Then you're going to pay him off, Dave? No. Oh. I'm not going to pay him. Not in money, anyway. I... Jeannie, listen. Listen closely. I'm going out now to see Ragnar. You stay in the apartment, do you hear? And when I come back, if anybody should ask, you're to swear I was here with you all the time, that I never left. Do you understand? Oh, Dave, I... I'm going now. And don't forget what I said. I'll get it, Dave. Hello? 
Ragnar? Oh, David's Ragnar. Lie to him. Stall him. Tell him I'm out getting the money and I'll be in his room in half an hour. Hello? Dave is out getting the money now and he'll be up at your room in a half an hour. That's right. As she lied to Ragnar, setting him up for me like a clay pigeon, I got a smashing impulse to hurry and get it over with. And maybe that was the mistake, because I moved too fast. I went to the lunchroom and in the dark got the pistol I kept under the counter. That took 20 minutes. It only took me 10 more to get to him. Nobody saw me go into his hotel and nobody saw me walk down the hall to his room. And then, there it was, his door. I was scared of Ragnar. That's why I had the gun out before I knocked. I already had the gun pointed as I heard the footsteps inside. That's why I was already squeezing the trigger as the door swung back. When the sound of that shot slammed into my brain, I dropped the gun and ran. Because I knew that that murder, too, was a mistake. A monstrous mistake. And that's why I'd come here now to this elegant place to see Jeannie. Because the sound of that shot still echoed in my mind, although 24 hours had passed. That's why I was following Mr. Mundy down the silent corridor. I had to see Jeannie once more and tell her about the mistake. Here you are, sir. In here. Thank you. Hello, Jeannie. Well, Jeannie, the police have already caught Ragnar. He's told them the whole story by now. They'll get me when I leave here. It was a mistake, Jeannie, a bad mistake. You see, I forgot that blackmailers always protect themselves. And that's what you found out. That's why Ragnar called our apartment just as I was leaving. To tell us he had written a letter about the whole thing to be forwarded to the police in case anything happened to him. That's why you tried to stop me from killing him. Why you went to Ragnar's room and waited for me. That's why you opened the door. But I'm not sorry it turned out this way, Jeannie. This way, I did it by mistake. Someday, I would have done it anyhow, deliberately. You see, Jeannie, the biggest mistake of all was my falling in love with you in the first place. Well, that's what I had to tell you. So, goodbye, Jeannie. Mr. Kimball, are you, uh, are you going to leave now? Yes, Mr. Mundy. Well, good night, sir. Good night. Hello, the Hillcrest Mortuary, Mr. Mundy speaking. It's strange, but it's true. A person can get so tired he can't do his work well, can't even get any fun out of life. Now, if you're that tired and pale besides, your doctor may find you have a borderline anemia resulting from a ferronutritional blood deficiency. Then take ironized yeast tablets. They help increase your strength, regain your color by building up your red blood cells. So take ironized yeast tablets to get the energy you need to work, to play, to think. Ironized yeast tablets. Be with us next week when the Mystery Theater presents The Inescapable Corpse starring Henry Morgan. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.